Here are the top five papers to read if you want to learn generative AI. Diffusion, which powers AI image and video generation. Attention is all you need, because no list would be complete without it. Hands, which revolutionized deepfakes. You shot learning from OpenAI, also known as the GPT-3 paper. And lastly, generative pre-training, which is of course where part of the acronym GPT comes from. I want to save you as much time as possible, so I'll point out uh, which sections of the papers are critical to read and which sections you can just skim over. Hang around till at least the halfway point since there's something about GANs that might actually surprise you. All right, the title of this first paper is a mouthful, so I'm not even going to bother saying it out loud. It's a 2020 paper from researchers at UC Berkeley. It revolutionized AI image generation with the diffusion model. The general idea, the high level explanation is that we train a model to go from completely random noise the outputting clear, visually discernible images. There is a ton of math you need to be familiar with for this paper, especially probability and statistics, so be sure to review that beforehand. I'm not gonna lie, this paper is a beast, even if you have a strong understanding of probability and statistics. I recommend focusing on the introduction, background, and section three, where some of the core results of the paper are discussed, and that's pretty much it. You can mainly skim over the actual experiments and results that the researchers obtained, though I do think that this section that has a little bit of pseudocode is useful. And of course, there is a related work and conclusion. But again, if you make it through the introduction, background, and section three, you've pretty much attained 90% of the value from this paper. All right, attention is all you need. This is the 2017 paper from Google that introduced the transformer. Interestingly enough, they didn't develop this model for chatbots. They developed it for translation models. They did away with RNNs or recurrent neural networks entirely, which hugely impacted deep learning. The high level is that they taught the models to pay attention to which parts of a sequence are most important instead of weighing each word equally. Attention did exist before this paper, but the authors proposed a new kind of attention, self-attention, which led to significantly greater results. Honestly, every section of this paper is worth reading, from the intro to the background to the why self-attention section to the training section, and even the results are good to skip over. But the most important section is the model architecture section. This is an architecture paper. The researcher's main contribution is developing this new model architecture. Rather than simple neural networks like this one, we now use the transformer for many different use cases and understanding the different components of the architecture is important. All right, GANs or generative adversarial networks. This model changed the state of deepfakes and AI image generation forever. Let's just break down what the term means. Adversarial, like your adversary or your enemy. That's actually gonna help us understand the high level for how GANs work. We're going to have two models being trained in parallel. These models can be thought of as adversaries or enemies. They're actually competing with each other. So we're going to have one model called the generator, which is going to generate fake images. And we're going to have another model, the discriminator, whose job is to tell the fake images from real images apart. So the goal of the discriminator is to tell whether or not an image that actually came from the generator is fake or real. And we're going to train both of those models together. As one model improves, the other model should theoretically improve as well. At first glance through this paper, it looks like you need a super strong math background. And of course, a math background, as for all deep learning papers, is important. Important. But if it's your first time reading this paper, just focus on this section over here. You want to focus on which functions we're maximizing and which functions we're minimizing during the training process. There are some other sections where they go into some theoretical proofs on when there's going to be an optimal generator and discriminator found. I honestly wouldn't worry about that the first time you're reading this paper. Just try to understand which functions we're maximizing and which functions we're minimizing. Pseudocode section section is also really useful to understand just to make sure you've got the general idea of GANs. Also a misconception about GANs is that because we have diffusion models now, maybe they're not
not used anymore. But Stable Diffusion actually uses GANs for the autoencoder, so GANs are definitely still relevant. Okay, the few shot learning paper. This is a 2020 paper from OpenAI that introduced GPT-3, which at the time was the most advanced LLM ever trained. The general idea is if you take a transformer, specifically a GPT, and if you scale it up to billions and billions of parameters, the model's ability to perform various NLP and conversational tasks improves greatly, far more than what was even expected. Okay, but what sections do you read? The introduction section is actually really useful for gaining some context on where the field of NLP stood at this time. The approach section is of course important for reviewing how GPTs are even trained. And the bulk of this paper is actually the results section where they evaluate GPT-3 on a ton of different benchmarks and metrics to actually assess its performance. Of course, you don't need to read every single line of this section and memorize these metrics, but it is cool to see where GPT-3 excels and improved and where it actually still struggled. All right, generative pre-training, the final paper on this list. This is a 2018 paper from OpenAI that introduced the idea of a GPT. Apparently, if you train a model on massive chunks of the internet, you get some pretty impressive results. The model learns to read and write. Before this paper, one of the main NLP techniques was to train specialized models. So we would have a model for sentiment analysis. We would have a model for answering reading comprehension questions. But this introduced the idea of a general purpose model. If you train the model on basically the entire internet, the model learns the nuances of a language and can actually answer a wide variety of questions. You can ask ChatGPT almost any question. You can ask it to identify parts of speech in a sentence. You can ask it to gauge the emotion in a body of text. It excels at all of these NLP tasks. Okay, what sections do you read? The introduction and related work are really important to read here for actually understanding the context of NLP and what approaches were used for GPTs. And of course, the framework section is important here because this is like a recipe for training any LLM. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And next, you might want to check out the video on the most important ML projects to build. See you in the next one.